So one of the most recent announcements from AWS Amplify was the announcement for container support using Fargate with AWS Amplify. Now there's a couple of ways that you can use containers with Amplify now. One is for deploying an API. So we have an option for deploying a REST API as well as a, a GraphQL API. But we also have container support for hosting, meaning you can essentially just take a Docker image and do whatever you'd like with it and deploy it using the Amplify CLI. And this will coordinate everything with Fargate and ECS and everything you need to kind of get up and running using a custom domain. Now this is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to build from scratch a brand new Next app. We're going to initialize Amplify hosting with Fargate using Docker. And then we're going to deploy our app to AWS in Fargate. And then we're going to make an update and kind of deploy an update to kind of see how that process looks. And we're going to do so using a custom domain. So I hope you enjoy this video and we're going to go ahead and get started right away. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new Next.js app using NPX. And once this is created, we're going to then go ahead and initialize uh, a new Amplify project. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and change into the new directory. And we're going to run Amplify init. And for these choices, um, it doesn't really matter a whole lot because we're not going to be using these commands. We're going to be using our Docker file. But since we're using um, you know, Next.js, we might go ahead and choose our source directory as the root directory and the distribution directory as .next. And then we can kind of take the rest of those defaults. And then finally, we're going to be prompted for our AWS profile, and I'll just choose my default profile. All right, so now we have an Amplify project initialized. So the next thing we need to do is we want to be using a custom domain. So I want to kind of deploy this on my own URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Google Domains, where I have purchased this domain name next.js on Fargate. And this is what we're going to be using to deploy our custom domain. And what we're going to basically be needing to do is updating our DNS to kind of match the name servers that we're going to create in AWS. So the next thing after that, uh, we have our domain. This could be GoDaddy. It could be really anywhere, including Route 53, if you want to do that. Um, once you have bought your domain and you have the ability to change the DNS, we're going to now configure this within Route 53. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Route 53. And this is going to bring us to the dashboard where we can click on Hosted Zones. And we're going to click Create Hosted Zone. And this is essentially going to create a place for us to configure our new domain, giving us the name servers that we're going to need. So for our domain, it's going to be Next.js on Fargate.com. And we can just keep all of the default settings. And I'm going to go ahead and click Create Hosted Zone. So this is going to now give us our name servers that we can now configure for our DNS. And we're pretty much done at this point working with the AWS dashboard. So I'm going to click on Use Custom Name Servers. I'm just going to start dropping these uh, four name servers into my DNS settings. So now we're going to save. We're going to click Change Name Servers Anyway. And this is going to take you know some time to propagate, but we're going to kind of uh, step away and come back to this. And then hopefully by the time we get back, everything has been propagated and all of that. But we can go ahead and use this domain because once it's configured in Route 53 and we've moved over our, um, our name servers over to our hosting provider, we can start using this domain name. So now we can go back to the Amplify console here. I'm sorry, we can go back to our, um, our CLI here. And what we're going to now do is run um, Amplify Configure Project because we want to now configure our project to uh, be aware that we're interested in using containers. So we can basically just you know, take all of the default settings that we had here. But we're going to now have a new prompt that's going to say something like, do you want to enable container-based deployments? We can choose yes. 
and then we can keep our existing AWS profile that we configured earlier. And then now we can run Amplify Add Hosting, and we'll see that we have the ability to choose container-based hosting with AWS Fargate. So what I'm gonna do is choose that, and then I'm gonna choose my domain name as www.nextjsonfargate.com. And do I want to uh, automatically protect my domain with uh, Cognito? Uh, do I want any authentication, essentially? I don't, I don't want that for this project, so I'm gonna choose no. Okay, so now that we've set all of that up, let's go ahead and open up the project in our text editor. And what you should now see is a, a Docker file. And in this Docker file, this is where we're going to basically um, go ahead and configure our deployment. Now, if you've worked with Docker before, you know that you pull Node.js from a, you know, a different image location. Um, but what we're gonna basically be using here is um, ECR, and ECR allows you to kind of pull from a local registry run by AWS. And the Docker image that we're gonna be working with is something I'm gonna paste into the uh, notes of this tutorial. And it's basically a really, really concise Docker file for deploying Next.js. Now this probably isn't the most you know, efficient or um, there's some, you know, probably some caching and, and things like that you can do to kind of make this more, I would say, production ready. But this actually will work fine and it's nothing wrong with the kind of starting from this because it is a lot more simple and there's only a few commands. And this is a good way for us to kind of just get Docker, you know, up and running with Next.js. And this is what we're gonna use. So I'm just gonna kind of uh, remove what's there and we're gonna kind of go through this Docker file. We're gonna be pulling um, you know, Node.js from this location. We're gonna set our work directory. We're gonna copy package JSON and yarn.lock if they exist. And we're gonna go ahead and then um, run yarn to install our node modules. We're gonna then uh, copy the rest of the files from our project into the um, app directory. And then we're gonna go ahead and build the app and we're gonna expose the port of 3000 and then we're gonna run yarn start. So from this, we should be, um, you know, this is all that we need to do really. We should be able to go ahead and deploy this. But let's say we wanted to go ahead and run this locally. We can do that. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, docker build and then um, we're gonna give it a tag of like next app. And then once this is built, we'll go ahead and test this out locally just to kind of make sure this all uh, looks like it's working properly. Okay, so after the build is complete, we should be able to run uh, docker image ls and see that we have this next app uh, docker image. And then we can now say docker run, set the port as something like 8080, and then we know that the app are, uh, that we're running is gonna be running on uh, 3000, and then we'll just pass in the name of our app. Um, so now we should be able to go to localhost 8080, and if um, our image is you know, deployed successfully locally, we should be able to kind of see it running. All right, so we have our image running locally. Uh, now let's deploy this. And to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the um, running instance locally, and we're gonna run amplify publish. Amplify Publish should now prompt us and ask us if we are sure we want to continue. We're gonna go ahead and choose yes. And that's it. Now our app should be being deployed to Fargate um, and we can now jump into the AWS console and after we wait a couple of minutes to kind of see the build process happening. And we're gonna to go to Code Pipeline And we should now see that we have uh, this build happening. And from here, you can kind of see the stages and uh, if there's anything that, that messes up, you know, if there's any errors or anything like that. Um, you can also go into the build projects to actually see some um, more fine grained details around logging and stuff. So if you have any errors during the build process, they should show up here. So um, with that being said, what we're gonna basically do now is uh, wait a few minutes and kind of uh, let this build complete. And then once it does, we're gonna then go test out our live domain. So I guess the thing that we're really waiting, waiting on to finish here 
is uh, the pipeline. So now that the pipeline has uh, finished, we see that it's succeeded and this is kind of um, meaning everything has been deployed and we can now hopefully test out our new application in a few minutes once the DNS is completed propagating. So to test it out, we'll go ahead and open our web browser and we'll just go to nextjs on fargate.com or whatever domain that you're using. And we should see that our app has been deployed successfully. Um, what about updates? So what we might want to do is go in and make um, a change and kind of like deploy a new version. So the simplest way for me to kind of um, show you how this works is instead of saying welcome to Next.js, maybe we can say welcome to Next.js like version 2. And then hopefully we can tell if this deployment update has worked because if so, then our live domain will be updated with welcome to Next.js version 2. So to test this out, what we're going to do to kind of make sure that this is working is we're going to go ahead and go to our CLI and we're going to now, whoops, we're going to now run Amplify Publish again. And once that's succeeded, we should now see a message saying Publish started. You can now check the status of your deployment and it kind of gives us a link to check that out. Whoops. And here, if we go to pipelines, we see that a new pipeline has started. And if we go to a build, we should also see a new build has started. So what we're going to now do is wait a couple of minutes for this deployment to succeed. And then we're going to refresh and see if our update is there. All right, so now that the build has successfully completed, we can now go to our URL. And now we see that we have Next.js version 2, meaning our deployment has successfully uh, been updated and everything is now working. So uh, that's it. So I hope you kind of learned a little bit about how Amplify Hosting manages containers. I'm going to be doing a few more videos about this subject, like I mentioned. We're going to look at how to deploy you know, the regular SSR version of React, the new React server components. We're going to be doing APIs with containers as well. So uh, look out for those videos. And if you're not already subscribed, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time.